Hi everyone, and welcome to the Games Research and User Experience Online Conference, and to my talk about whether you need technical knowledge for a career in Games UI UX. In this talk, I hope to provide some insights, tips, and information to help you decide what level of technical knowledge is right for you. I'll start with a little background about me. My name is Andrea Gonçalves, and I am currently an experienced designer at EA. My formal education consists of a bachelor's in communication design, followed by a diploma in programming for games, web, and mobile. I've been in games for five years, and I've worked on mobile, PC, and console titles. I joined the game industry as a UI programmer working in mobile games. After two years, I decided to change my focus back to design and transition to a UI UX designer position. Currently, in my team at EA, I have a multidisciplinary role with a focus on UX design. Due to my background in both design and programming, I have always had an affinity and interest in technical aspects of bringing design to life, and have looked for opportunities to include it in the design process. Before I start, I want to state that the content of this talk is my point of view and doesn't represent my company. So why am I here? In the past year, I have joined design communities and started connecting with junior designers or designers looking to switch into the games industry. During these interactions, I have encountered questions and doubts about whether it's necessary to have coding or other technical knowledge to work as UI UX designers in games. Due to my background in both design and programming, I have always been an advocate for the benefits that technical knowledge brings to designers. For this reason, I thought I might take a shot at demystifying what technical knowledge might be and why it is valuable for games. In this talk, we'll start by defining what technical knowledge means. Then I will share my findings from a survey to other professionals about the value and role of technical knowledge in their position. After this, I will give a brief overview of the main aspects of game development that make technical knowledge more necessary, but also more accessible than in other industries. Lastly, I will talk through a breakdown of levels of technical knowledge to clarify what they are and what they add to your toolbox as a designer. Hopefully at the end, you'll understand why technical knowledge is valuable and what level is right for you. So what is technical knowledge? The way I define technical knowledge in this context is any type of information or skill that a designer might have which helps them develop a common language with engineers, consider technical implications and constraints when designing, or implement features or part of features themselves. To help frame this, here are some specific examples. It can be experience working with a game engine such as Unity or Unreal, laying out screens in the engine editor, adding implementation nodes to wireframes, flows, or mockups, using knowledge of the tech stack in the design process, and collaborating on design systems and component libraries. To gather other opinions and better understand what is the value that technical knowledge brings, I ran a survey with a small group of professionals. This short survey was aimed at professionals in games UI UX design related positions to find more information about whether they thought technical knowledge was valuable, if they had some themselves, and how exactly it contributed to their role. I was able to reach about 34 professionals with more than seven different role names. The top positions in the responses were experienced designer, UI UX designer, UX designer, and UI artist. About half the participants had experience with both console, PC, and mobile. More than half had five years or more of experience, and also about half say they had a leadership role. So let's look at the results. When asked if they thought it was valuable to have some technical knowledge, almost everyone said yes. And when asked if they had some technical knowledge themselves, most of the respondents also said yes. I 
I asked to specify what type of technical knowledge they had experience with or used in their roles, and the main ones mentioned were mostly related to using the game engine, as well as some basic experience with scripting and background with web technologies. When prompted to imagine that they were building a team, the answers were split between thinking all or only some designers in the team should have some technical knowledge. I was curious to find out what were the main reasons others thought it's valuable to have technical knowledge and what could be the downsides from their perspective. The key benefit seems to be to create designs that are more likely to become a reality. The conclusion I got from the responses is that technical knowledge is important to help bring design to life. It's useful for communicating, translating between areas of expertise, and understanding the workflow. To be aware of limitations and planning for them, working around them, or pushing against them. To make designs that work, not just on paper that it gives more autonomy to the designer to be able to experiment and prototype. And lastly, it saves time in development and makes the product more polished by having the right skills working on the right assets. The main downside mentioned was to watch out for the possibility to self-limit and have a harder time thinking outside of the box. Some mentioned it was a double-edged sword. It might take time away from design and become overwhelming when technical responsibilities start piling on the designer. The designer can become a blocker if they are the only one with this knowledge and helping on this part of the process. It can sometimes create a bias for possible solutions versus ideal design. There were also some respondents who thought there was no downside to this. Lastly, I asked what they thought could be the reason this is present as a requirement in some design job posts. The main answers here was that it likely is more true for mobile and smaller teams, but also that companies tend to ask for everything they can, which is not good practice. An interesting point made is that this often creates a more flexible skill set that can make an impact at any phase of the project. Some mentioned that the fact that the barrier of entry to technology is lowering contributes to the expectation of candidates already having it. So hopefully that shows that technical knowledge can be really valuable and highlight that most of these professionals have experience with it themselves. Next, we will cover why I think it's especially important to contribute at a technical level in games, but also why it's more accessible for designers than in other industries. Game teams are incredibly multidisciplinary, even just in the design discipline alone. There can be game designers, level designers, UI designers, UX designers, and so on. The roles and their responsibilities can vary per studio, game type, and project size. And the same happens for engineering disciplines and other disciplines. More experts create more gaps in the process, and the key to creating a great experience is to learn how to collaborate together and complement each other's skill sets. The common language and playfield often becomes the tools that you use to bring the experience to life. I think the game industry has encountered the problem with handoff processes and iteration a long time ago, and the tools seem to reflect the constant evolution to solve this issue. In games, generally speaking, we use what is called a game engine to build the application. These can be custom proprietary tools or customer-facing applications such as Unity and Unreal. These two are free and commercialized, which I think further pushed for more intuitive and accessible workflows. The goal of these engines is to empower people to make games. So they aim to facilitate anyone involved in the project to do this. For an indie game, that might mean one sole game designer trying to bring their idea to life. And so they make an effort to empower designers to realize their vision with whatever skills they might have. This provides us UI UX designers with great opportunities. 
There are two main reasons why game engines like Unity and Unreal are game changers for allowing designers to prototype and develop games. The content creation tools and the scripting tools. I will try to showcase both from the perspective of a UI UX designer. And my aim here is to give you visibility to the tools and hint to the power they can give you, rather than go deeper on how they work. Let's look at content creation first. A great example is UI Editor in Unity. This allows you to build interfaces in an intuitive way similar to other design tools. As you add elements, resize, and edit properties, you can see in real time how they will look when running the application. They also allow you to save what is called a prefab, which works like the source of truth for, for a component. You can reuse it in your content, and when it's changed, all instances are updated. The other one is scripting tools, such as visual scripting. This gives you the ability to visually program using simple logical statements, which allows you to create simple logic without writing code. It enables you to create some interactivity or state changes without having to learn programming. Visual scripting are other ways to enable people to build products without extensive programming knowledge. It's becoming more and more common with the rise of no-code or low-code applications. It is even entering the mainstream, which we can see by looking at iOS's Shortcuts app, which allows any iPhone user to automate simple tasks. Now that we've looked at whether it's valuable and why, and how it is more accessible for designers in games, let's look at some specific types of technical knowledge UI UX designers can leverage. I've started the talk by sharing a brief definition of what I mean by technical knowledge in the scope of design. In the previous sections, we went over the value other professionals see in it, what are some common skills, and how game development tools enable designers to make meaningful contributions in this space. Now I will walk you through some of the types of technical knowledge I've identified so that you are familiar with them and how they can bring value to you. These are communication and documentation, authoring content in the game engine, being able to influence implementation, being able to prototype in the game engine, and lastly, being able to build features yourself. We'll start with communication. This is understanding how features are built and how engineers work so you can communicate with them to understand constraints as well as document your design in the most useful way. An example use case can be if you're documenting wireframes or mockups, adding notes about how elements are anchored and how it should log logically resize or how a certain element is expected to change based on its contents. If you want to get started practicing this, you can research the tools in engines like Unity and try to take one of your designs and add notes that would help someone implement it correctly. Next, we'll look at authoring content. Authoring content is recreating your design in the engine and includes importing assets as well as laying out widgets and screens. Often, this also includes creating the components that build up your component library and can be reused in other screens. An example use case would be creating a button that should look the same in every screen and that when you make changes, you can update it in one place. In Unity, this would be creating that button and converting it to a reusable component. This will add that element to your project folder so that you can reuse it and access the original for editing. A way to get started with this is to download Unity, which is free, import fonts and any textures you might need, and try to recreate one of your designs. Next, let's talk about influencing implementation. Influencing implementation is being able to assess your current tech stack and use this information when designing. This will allow you to be able to request missing tech ahead of time and work with engineers so that features can be built in a flexible way. This should result in a system that allows for building upon and for iterating.
This is the philosophy behind design systems, which is trying to foresee all the ways the product can evolve and creating building blocks that allow you to build the present as well as the future. The reason why I think it's important for a designer to be involved at this stage is because often the information that engineers have is limited to the current state of design. Only you, the designer, have more insight into what is coming or what parts of the design are more prone to change. When you participate in this process, you are positioning the team to be able to react to feedback in an effective way. To get started with this, you can participate in game jams to work in a team dynamic with programmers and start learning what these missing pieces of functionality might be and how you would communicate them. Or you can start by researching the tools, again, Unity or Unreal, try to recreate your design and see what obstacles you find. After these, you can, for example, document your initial solution as well as an option that doesn't require that missing functionality. Next, let's look at prototyping. Prototyping in the engine allows you to leverage code that might already be written, as well as have your prototype embedded in the experience. In games, a lot of features can only be prototyped in engine due to the spatial movement or complex mechanics. So doing it in the engine can sometimes be the only option. Because of this, being able to put your solutions to the test in context can be a big plus. An example where you can leverage prototyping in the engine is if you are working on communicating something important to the player in a very intense moment of gameplay. You want to grab the player's attention here and the context and emotions are important and can be hard to recreate outside of the experience. If you are able to prototype in the engine, you can try your different solutions independently without as many dependencies on other team members. A way to get started with this is to try to recreate a click-through prototype in Unity or Unreal. Lastly, let's look at building. Building expands your possibilities from authoring content, where you implement the visual assets of your interface. Here you take the next step and start scripting or coding small pieces of visual logic. This level has its own spectrum, as you start delving into more software engineering concepts that can become more abstract. A simple example I'd like to use for this one is if you have a character health bar and you want it, the color to change based on the health value. You probably want something like, if the health is below a certain value, make it red, otherwise make it green. If you are the one setting up this logic, or at least know how to change it, you can update these parameters yourself whenever the design changes. To get started with this, I suggest following the beginner tutorials for either Unreal or Unity, or checking out game creation tutorials on YouTube. You can also try to recreate the health bar example I just mentioned. And those were the five types of technical knowledge I have identified. Communication is about creating a common language with engineers so that you can document your design in the best way and you can communicate about constraints. Authoring content consists of recreating your design in the engine yourself, which allows you to have more control over the visual quality of the content. Influencing implementation is the ability to understand the tech stack and use that knowledge to predict what tech is needed and create processes that allow for iteration. Prototyping in Engine allows you to create prototypes in context, which can take you one step further from what you can do in the design tools. And lastly, building, which at a minimum enables you to control simple visual logic, such as states and triggering animations. Hopefully that gives you an overview of types of technical knowledge you can leverage in your design role and even start exploring as you get ready to look for positions. So let's take a moment to recap. We've seen that in the survey results, most professionals found it valuable to have technical knowledge, 
and do have certain levels of technical knowledge themselves. We went through some of the benefits as well as potentially downsides from their perspective. After that, we covered at a high level the main aspects of game development that make technical knowledge valuable in this industry as well as more accessible to designers. Lastly, we went through a breakdown of specific technical knowledge that UI UX designers can leverage to maximize their impact in their roles. Based on this, we can see that the overall benefits in investing in some degree of technical knowledge can be designing solutions that are more likely to be built, the ability to polish and directly impact the final experience, the ability to prototype and iterate faster, a more well-rounded and flexible skill set, and also that some studios might ask for this skill, so th will, this will give you an edge. So, back to our initial question. Do you need technical knowledge for a career in games UI UX? Well, the truth is, it depends. Let me clarify. If there is a specific studio that you want to work at, and you love their work, and they mention this in their job post, then ideally you should get some of these skills. It doesn't seem like you always need it, but you'll likely need to develop it on the job. If you're starting out, I think it's good to at least be familiar with the tools that are used in game development. But you don't need a lot of experience in advance, as that will come with time. If you don't want to dive into it though, it seems like that will make you a great asset. In the end, it's up to you to decide based on what you value and hopefully the information I share with you today can help with this. The main advice I can give you on the importance of technical knowledge and if I can leave you with only one message is that technical knowledge is not just coding. It's the set of skills that will help your design be built into a reality. And that's all. Thanks so much for watching. If you have any questions about technical knowledge or other game dev and UI UX related questions, you can reach out to me on Twitter or head out to the conference Discord. If you want to learn more about me, you can also check out my website at andrea.design. All right. Thanks so much again for watching. I hope this was useful to you and enjoy the rest of the conference. Bye.